Welcome everybody, Andy Oliver here for the fan carpet. Dark forces are afoot today because we are feeling the force. We are at Elstree Studios' first Comic Con here today and I'm off to meet some of the guests and get some wonderful interviews. <sighs> get a bit scared, better go. Introduce you to Paul Warren who's played a part in many, many movies over the years. Um, you've played everything from, well, zombies to an alien, haven't you? Could you give us a brief uh, outline of your career? Yeah, I've been a uh, creature uh, performer, actor for about 10 years now. Um, I started on the Harry Potter films. I was uh, Danny Radcliffe's body double and I'd do the flying scenes on uh, Order of the Phoenix. And that kind of got me into the industry where they started then putting me into monster suits and animatronic and puppeteering and all kinds of crazy things there. I think mainly because I could probably tolerate it and I didn't moan about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, what, can we, what can we stick him in this week? You know, yeah. so... Yeah, I've been very lucky, very lucky. So I've managed now to be able to, to do it as a living, as, as a, a creature performer. Yeah. Well, how did you actually get the part of this, um, this part in Red Dwarf? Um, originally, I um, read for Rimmer. Yeah, yeah. That was ridiculous, really. You know, as I was reading it, I thought, this isn't me. It's not me. It's Chris was perfect, you know. And then I didn't get that. So they said, will you read this part? Because it wasn't a visual part for Holly so I did the Everybody's Dead Dave scene and they were all laughing around me you know and I thought I must stand a chance here it's mm. this and it, it was right for me to do that you know I think you know as soon as you start saying the lines you know that if something's right mm. for you or cut you're comfortable with it mm -hmm. so got it can you give us a little bit of a sort of background as to the, the movies you've been in your experiences yeah sure um basically this studio is here is where I did um, Return of the Jedi as an Ewok, so it has very fond memories for me, you know. Uh, Labyrinth was standing here and also Willow. So these studios are really, you know, it's a shame they're much smaller now than what they were so many years ago. I think we're looking at 40 years ago now. So, you know, um, I actually work in an office. I work for the UK Border Force. And um, Star Wars came about because they were looking for little people and they don't come any smaller than me. So, <laughs> as I am officially Britain's smallest man. Right. right. And I have a twin brother who's 5'11". And, and I hate the bugger. <laughs> and he's, he squashed me, I'm sure he did. <laughs> How is it going? How are you finding the experience? It's going really well, actually, yeah. Um, this is actually my first ever um, Comic Con, so it's um, really exciting for me to be here, um, obviously supporting an amazing cause as well, so that's really, really great. And just meeting some of the fans, like people, you know, really do um, go all out to, to make sure that they get signatures from all of the cast and just seeing such diehard fans because that's, they're the people who make these films, um, you know, happen really because um, we, we need their support. So it's, it's been a really, really interesting experience so far. Years and years ago, I started in youth theatre, you know, doing plays and kind of fell out of things. And then within about two years or something, I started doing a little bit of background bit of extra work stuff like that which I hadn't thought about doing it's good fun so it gave me the bug again so I thought right okay let's let's do some acting bit of James Bond um, Skyfall which was amazing and that's was just being on set with Daniel Craig and Sam Mendes and stuff was just incredible and then uh, with uh, Rogue One um, SSGB which was a, a big thing for me getting that part was amazing playing Himmler um, and on and on. We are here at Elstree Studios Film and Comic Con and I'm joined by the prestigious gentleman on my left which who is the Deputy Mayor of Boreham Wood sir. Uh, we're always also here uh, for the National Autistic Society uh, so first of all I'd like to ask you uh, how have you enjoyed yourself today? You've had a look round? It's been a very good day. This place are wonderful, and I thank everybody that uh, uh, played a part today. Can you tell us briefly, Leslie, what the society does? Sure. We provide advice, information, and support for autistic people and their families. We have schools and services. We have volunteer-led branches. Uh, we are the leading repository for information and advice about autism. 
Um, we have a free helpline, and our website is an amazing place to go for any information about autism, whether you're um, about to get a diagnosis, thinking about getting a diagnosis, or have recently had one. Um, we also help adults living with autism. Autism, as you probably know, is a spectrum condition, so it affects everybody differently. And one thing that a lot of people forget is that autism isn't a child's thing. Autistic children grow up to be autistic adults. And often, with the right support and the right advice, they can go on to lead wonderful, fulfilling lives. Um, we know that only 16% of autistic adults are in full-time employment, so we're currently working to help people with that because that can be a massive challenge. And some simple adjustments in the workplace can make all the difference between an autistic adult having and holding a job and not being able to find one. I mean, you run events around the UK, don't you? We do. We have all kinds of events. I'm in the fundraising team, so um, I've been working with Ian uh, to help support this event, yeah, which yeah. we're so, so grateful that he chose to support the National Autistic Society. I was going to tell you, how did you become involved in today's event? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we do community fundraising, so we're here to help people like Ian who want to put on an, an event to help other autistic people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, we're just so grateful to all of our supporters who do all kinds of amazing things. Yeah. There's a national day now, isn't it, March, isn't there? The National Autistic Day. So that's yes. obviously going to bring to the forefront more in people's minds, isn't it, now that there's a national day for it? Yeah, it's actually World Autism Awareness World day, autism day, yes. um, which is uh, decided by the United Nations of all people. Yeah. So that's April 1st, 2nd next year. But we do a whole week of events leading up to that, which we call World Autism Awareness Week. If you go to our website, if you search on autism, it's autism.org.uk, you can find all kinds of information about World Autism Awareness Week and about all kinds of things you could do. So how can, I was just asking you, just to expand on that, like how do people get involved if somebody wants to plan an event to, uh, for, for autism and make that aware to people that they know, how do they get involved in that? How, what's the first step? The first step should be to visit our website or to email fundraising at nas.org.uk and we can help, whether it's something like running a marathon or whether it's something bespoke, taking your own personal passion like for amazing Star Wars stuff, or, um, or for Lego, or for Minecraft, or for baking, or basically anything that somebody's passionate about, films, anything. We can help them turn that into a fundraising event, big or small. Now, um, personally, I'm affected by dementia, my family, and, and strokes. And, uh, you know, you get told there's a certain thing you have to look out for. With autism, it's, it's a certain age, isn't it? It's between six months and a certain years where it becomes apparent, isn't it? And what, what signs, what would we say, what signs are we looking for for people out there that may think they've got a child who's autistic at a particular young age? Well, if somebody thinks that they've got a child who might be on the autism spectrum, the first thing they should do is talk to their GP. And, they can, and there's not a sign, it's a spectrum um, condition, so it presents differently in everybody. But if any parent has any worries about how their child is developing, if they've delayed speech, if they have started speaking but have then lost their speech, they should be talking to their GP in the first instance. And there is, as I said, a wealth of information on our website and on our free helpline. So they should contact us if, if in doubt. In a, in a nutshell, I've been in TV and film for eight years now. So anything from EastEnders, Holby City, Silent Witness on TV, to obviously bigger films, uh, Star Wars Force Awakens, Rogue One, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Spectre, Bond, yeah, Skyfall, uh, the list goes, this goes on and on. What is a day like in the life of a stormtrooper, tell me? <laughs> Well, we, uh, there, was, there was 10 of us got picked, 10 core troopers throughout the whole film of The Force Awakens. So it was a journey just to get to, to be on set. But I remember the first night, we did the first filming in Jakku Village, five night shoots, and uh, it was intense. You looked around, there's a buzz about a place, explosions, fires going on. Uh, it's, it's immense. The, the scale of something like the, uh, Star Wars yes. is an epic, epic film, and you've got so many people on set helping in, in all sorts of areas so it's obviously a lot of stuff behind the scenes but uh, for me it was a dream come true just looking around uh, and I'll do it again in a heartbeat. So. Rogue One, General Ramda in Rogue One so can you describe that I mean uh, I'm a certain age just not far off you growing up in the 70s Star Wars is part of your life so how does that feel then being on a Star Wars set? <laughs> Oh well, it was a, it was a, a very it was extraordinary getting that part. You kind of knew that 
but even my agent was like going, uh, this is quite big, Richard. And I was going, okay, all right. But we, we didn't kind of know what, how big the part was or anything, but, you know, just, it felt really odd being offered that part, and you kind of thought, I, how could I be in a Star Wars movie? I wasn't, you know, I was a st stage actor and whatever, and I thought I was too over the top or whatever. <laughs> but it really, you know, I mean, it was just an amazing experience. And my first day, I remember my first day, um, uh, Gareth was like saying that everybody was like very very emotional on their first day because there's a huge responsibility uh, so everybody's feeling a little bit tense you know we've got to deliver we, this film's gonna gotta be to a certain standard exactly and it, we're on an it's iconic so Gareth was kind of a little bit scared about the whole thing too he was like going oh god I'm directing a Star Wars movie but you know so it was a uh, it was kind of um it was very nerve-wracking on my first day I was on set with Darth Vader <laughs> and I was doing just some off lines for um, for Ben because I was uh, there was a hologram of me originally that never made it never made it into the film um, but there's this hologram I appear in, in front of Ben and given all this information that you actually does come out in the film in another way now um, and then he pushed me out of the way went mm, like this uh, through my hologram and and then he goes into a Darth Vader scene that actually is not seen in the movie either so there's another Darth Vader scene probably not allowed to tell you that that might be on the blue here I don't know. <laughs> yeah okay so yeah I had the great good fortune to be in uh, all three of the prequel trilogy um, before that, I was in uh, Fifth Element, and uh, after that, I was in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And these are mainly um, a creature, creature parts, aren't they? What what is that like to play a, a, a creature part? Yeah, I was well. I was concentrating on those things because of the kind of event we're at today. You know, yeah, that's what yeah. people are mostly interested in. I, I've done other stuff before. You know, I've done theatre and television and what have you. But uh, these kind of events. Primarily, people come out to see the more fantastical side of things. Yes, yes, you know, yes. what it was it like? Um, more often than not, incredibly uncomfortable. More often than not, very hot. <laughs> uh, but always good fun. Are you yeah, having a good yeah, day? Yeah, it, it's livened up now, and it's quite good. Yeah. So, what is your involvement here? I know you've had you've had a very career over various, well, not just uh, well films. Actually, other things as well, isn't there? There's, yeah. there's there's toys and everything, isn't there? Yeah. Yes, I'm now in a Lego video game, so I'm now a, a Lego character. So you've you've done a voiceover for one of the Lego games, no, which you know. No, it's actually me. Oh right, right, right. Yes, I see that now. <laughs> this is actually you. <laughs> That's me. My scenes were actually shot at Shepperton. And uh, I was very, very fortunate in terms that uh, I was offered an X-Wing pilot position. Uh, so I was in two scenes, the briefing room scene and the ceremonial entrance. And uh, yeah, that was quite a while ago now. But one of my sense memories of that film was the smell of the perspex and plastic because uh, it was all built. It wasn't CGI in any way, shape or form. And as we all know, well, well most of us, my age, 19, my 1976 was an incredibly hot summer. Do you remember that, Andy? Yeah, yeah. So obviously, with the heat, that was really trans, you know, transferring that sort of smell of plastic and perspex. Yeah, yeah but I, I feel really privileged. You know, as you know, I was only a background artist, but I feel absolutely blessed to be part of that mega film called Star Wars. You know? I mean, you're obviously in one of the most iconic scenes at the end there, where you've got all the main actors on stage as well. Everybody's on there, isn't it? Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher. What was that like? Well, you've got to bear in mind, I helped blow up the Death Star and I survived. <laughs> that uh, Darth Vader sort of flew off all a bit girly, didn't yeah. he? You know? So we were in a ceremonial entrance. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, that was quite something. Um, yeah, no, a wonderful experience. Yeah. I mean, the original Star Wars movies, uh, you know, like Rogue One that's come out, they've, they've gone back to the original creatures, many women in costumes a bit like what you're talking about the perspex it wasn't cgi was it it was back in the old days wasn't it not like the new ones wasn't it no 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 plenty of costumes yeah in actual fact because it was so hot we were 
kicking those sort of costumes back into the changing room several times. We were so hot, we were changing, you know, and, uh, you know, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so what is your, your favourite memory of, of being on set on Star Wars? I mean, there's got to be a few, but I spoke to a gentleman over there, um, I think it was Richard Cunningham, who's in Rogue One, and he mentioned when he first walked on set, he saw droids and things, and he couldn't believe it that he was in this world of George Lucas's world. What was yours? Well, as a child, I grew up with the love of space and rockets. So to be around, you know, pilots and space was something really special for me. Um, lots of camaraderie on set. You know, these days you couldn't get in front of the mat, as we say now, the director. But in those days, you could get round George and the third AD and, and ch just chat quite openly. Um, so, yeah, it was quite, it was very friendly, but obviously very professional. Um, and as a, as a child, you know, being around rockets and space was amazing for me, you know. Hi everybody, Andy Oliver here at the Elstree Comic Con uh, in Boreham Wood and I'm joined by one of the most iconic droids, robots, characters, whatever there is, from Star Wars. It's, it's R2-D2 everybody, R2-D2! I know, you're very excited to be here R2, so what have you been up to? And, and I'm joined by, well, Curry Ann Williams, but as you can see, the Amazonian uh, woman that I've got sitting here. Um, <laughs> obviously, uh, there's something a uh, connection with Wonder Woman here. Can you tell us all about How that? How did you get? I don't know. I thought it was maybe um, maybe another superhero, um, oh. Catwoman. Uh, <laughs> don't know. It's Wonder Woman, is it? It's Wonder Woman. Wow. Yes. So what's the connection? So I was actually the stand-in body double and stunt double for Gal Gadot. So that is why I'm here, and that is why you guessed correctly. I am Wonder Woman. So how did you get involved with that wonderful? It did, did really well at the box office, oh, didn't it? Amazing! I was so proud to be a part of it. 800 million, I think yeah. they did. Smashed it. It's so it's so it's such a beautiful thing to be a part of that I will forever be proud of. Um, but how I got into it was kind of a fluke. Right place, right time. I was an extra on the set, one of the first sets they um, were filming. They already had a stand-in and double at the time. Yeah. And um, she saw me and she was like, yeah, you've got that gal thing going on. Like, <laughs> sure, because she's American and great yeah. and all, you know, they don't, they don't hold back, do they, the Americans? No. So <laughs> they, um, she just, she said to me, you know, have you ever done it? And I was like, done what? I didn't even know that a doubling was a thing or standing in was a thing. It was my first time on a film set. Um, and then about four months later, I get a call saying Patty Jenkins remi remembers you. Uh, the, the double has been promoted to an actual role in the film. Are you free tomorrow at 6 a.m.? And of course, I said yes. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you get that call. I mean, it's a very physical role, yes. very demanding role. You must have had some kind of, uh, well, did you have any physical background? Did you? Well, yeah, I am a dancer, so I yeah. think that helped with yeah. um, stamina because it was, it's a long day on set and, you, you know, you're doing poses like, for example, um, there's a, a bit with the, the tank. We, you know, we, we're there all day like this. So I, it was definitely a bonus that I, I have ballet, ballet dancing experience. But um, the Amazonians had to train for like six, seven weeks. I missed all of that. <laughs> <laughs> just walked in and got just walked in, yeah, pretty much got on with it. I, st I stood in for her for a few days, and then and then one day they just said, oh, yeah, you're wearing the suit today, so and just like that. You've got a dance school, you went to dance school, didn't you? Sorry? You went to dance school, I didn't you? I went to dance school, yeah. I've been dancing and acting since I was three years old, so I always kind of knew um, how the industry sort of worked, and I had experience in that, in, in that um, area, if you would. But, yeah, it was... I'm looking at Gal Gadot and I'm thinking when I saw the movie, uh, I think she's one of these ladies that will walk in a room and not because she's beautiful, but she has a certain Very presence. Strong presence, yeah, and she's lovely. Uh, you know, you hear about these actresses on set that don't talk to anyone. She would talk to you know someone in the toilets, and she spoke to us every day and made us feel really welcome. And you know, I remember on in International Women's Day, she was like, "Happy International Women's Day!" Just you know, you can't get to her very often because she's usually being picked up by makeup and hair and all sorts. But yeah, she was just a delight to be on set with, and a real inspiration. Like the way that when she'd film something, she'd come round and she'd really look at it and you know make sure she was happy with it and Patty was happy with it. And then they they made that film together. Like really, really did. It's a real strong woman's part. Hard, isn't it? Yeah, it really is, and she deserves it because you know she was in the army. She's just, she's yeah, just she got, was, she's yeah. just got that. She's got Wonder Woman going yeah, on. We kind of forget she had a military background. She yeah, served exactly. in the army, didn't she? Exactly. So she's, uh, she deserves the role. Let's, I, I, you know, she's, yeah. and that's why she's there. Hi everyone. I'm joined here by one of the sponsors of the Elstree Film and Comic Con. This is Hazel Green Hampers. Hazel Green Hampers. Uh, yes, and you are one of the owners, sir. Of course, Hardy. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're so we're a very. Um, 
startup uh, of like creating hampers. One day we're looking for some hampers and we a lot of the products in those hampers online, they're just from the local s store. So we went out and looked for kind of independent suppliers uh, and then created um, Hazel Green Hampers. Yeah. And I guess you're proud to be sponsoring something like this. This is the first one. Yeah, yeah. So we found Ian uh, online. Uh, we're trying to like find some charities to work with, and the Autistics Charity is, is a great charity to sponsor, and we're just so happy to sponsor. Mm. It's getting the word out there as well, uh, like especially with aut autism. Yeah, exactly. it's getting the word out to all the people that are watching this, young and old, isn't it? Sorry. Sorry? Young and all the light watching this can yeah. can gain information about autistic society and things, can't they? Exactly. So it's it's a great event for people to come and understand more about autism um, and to help fundraise. So, so I've got to ask. I mean, while we're here, what's your favourite sci-fi film? What's your favourite geek film, as we call it? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably the Star Wars. I'd yeah. have to go with the Star Wars one. Um, and. Yeah, the Star Wars probably. Me here. Yeah, how about you? Me and Star Wars Star as well. Wars. Yeah, with the old ones or the new ones? The old ones. Old ones, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, probably the old, it was always yeah. the one, that's true. Well, yeah. well, thanks for joining us, Adi. I hope you have a wonderful day. And thanks yeah. for being a sponsor of a wonderful, wonderful cause as well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I'm joined by Jay from Posh Picks. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your company, Jay. I own a photo booth company, so we have a magic mirror and a photo booth. We specialize in weddings, birthday parties, Christians, just general parties, really. I mean, it's getting very big business now, this sort of thing, isn't it? Very popular at the moment, very, very popular. So how did you become involved in, uh, in this, sort of, this Comic-Con today? Um, we was asked to do an event for charity, so yeah, we phoned up, booked us, and we turned up for the day. So you've actually, you've actually given your services? Yeah. yeah, completely for free today. Wow. So what's this, is, this your, is there a website as well yeah. people can go to? Our website is poshpicsphotobooth.co.uk. We've got a Facebook as well, it's Posh Picks Photo Booth. And that's, that's about it, yeah. Okay, thank you for speaking to us, Jay. No worries. Enjoy thank you your very day. Much. See you later. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. It's so much fun. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.